Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James, hope you guys are all doing well and I'm back with the Scorched Earth Note series. The Explorer Notes are collectible items that are scattered across all the various canon maps. The Island, Scorched Earth, Aberration, Extinction and even Genesis has its own dossiers and acts as a piece of narrative between all of the survivors. Today we begin Sir Edmund Rockwell's read through of his dossiers and diary from the Scorched Earth. Before we jump into this, I just want to remind you guys that I now have a Twitter account and if you'd like to follow me there for more information on when I upload and when I stream, then please do so. So we continue the story of Sir Edmund Rockwell and what happened in his story on Scorched Earth. The survivor notes from both Helena and Rockwell continue where we left off on the island. So sit back, relax and enjoy part one of Sir Edmund Rockwell's diary from Scorched Earth. Confound those confusing contraptions. Despite my best efforts, I could not make neither heads nor tails of those mysterious machines that brought me here. If only I still had that jittery back speckled assistant of mine all those years ago. What's his name? Gerard? Gerard? The one that loved tinkering with the devices we salvaged from the arms of the island's less fortunate inhabitants. Good lad. The inscriptions he found on the inside of those little trinkets were where I first saw the word Ark, as I recall. Shame about the incident with the Compi Gavanus. If I still had his services, perhaps I would never be in this godforsaken desert. Ah oh well, stiff upper lip Rockwell, make the best of it. Right then, now that I've found a shady spot where I can enjoy a brief respite from the desert's dreadful heat, it's high time I set up some goals for this expedition. If I wander about aimlessly, then I'm sure to meet the same fate as poor Gerald. First, I shall locate a tribe if for no other reason than to obtain a proper mount and supplies. Second, I simply must learn more about that strange metal that lined the walls of the sanctuary. Even with a cursory study I can tell that it possesses wondrous properties. But where could I find more of it? I must say that nothing reminds a man of his own mortality quite like a desolate wasteland. As a strapping young lad, I could have survived alone in the desert for years. Why on one occasion, I fought off a Bengal tiger with naught but an empty flask and my favourite pipe. With this makeshift spear, the beasts of this land would never have a prayer. Yet in my old age, I can feel this damnable sun sapping my strength with every minute I spend under its unforgiving gaze. Each day I cover less ground than the day before. I must find civilization soon. No matter how primitive, without the right tools and supplies, I fear this expedition will be incredibly short-lived. Eureka! At last I found signs of human life. This afternoon, I came across a fresh series of footprints, some from humans and some from what I assume are large beasts of burden. I cannot be sure who made them or how civilized they may be, but neither can I afford to be too particular in my choice of saviors. Whoever they are, I must track them down immediately. As soon as I can gather my strength, I shall pursue my query with the uttermost haste and vigour. The tale of the brilliant, impeccably groomed Sir Edmund Rockwell shall not end this day. Salvation, thy name is Prophet's Rest. After a proper meal and some time out of the sun, this makeshift fortress doesn't seem half as grand as the name might imply. Yet when I first sighted its walls from across the dunes, it may as well have been El Dorado itself. So grateful was I to find it. Thus far, I have seen very little of the inhabitants, but they seem a hospitable sort. I've been given food, shelter, and even a wet cloth to clean myself with. Quite generous of them, considering how scarce water is in these lands. Their clothing is a curiosity, however. These robes seem more ceremonial than functional. It seems Prophet's Rest is less a fortress than more an enclave or monastery. I suppose that would explain the name, now wouldn't it? Yes, as strange as it may sound, the natives who created a primitive religion centred around the Ark's obelisks. They pray three times a day, each time facing a different obelisk. Their robes bear a unique symbol, a three-pointed star coloured red, green and blue. The blue obelisk appears to receive particular reverence due to its proximity. As charmingly ignorant as their superstitions may be, is far from the most savage religion I've encountered. Besides, Prophet's Rest is in need of a doctor, and I'm in need of supplies. 
I've discovered why Prophet's Rest is so generous with its water. The well at the edge of the compound is built directly on top of what the locals call a water vein. An endless supply of water bubbles up from beneath the earth. Its existence is a minor miracle though compared with what I saw on the Starlight Sanctuary. Minor is the operative word. I suppose the Ark must be floating around the stars just as the island was. What an extraordinary thought. I cannot fathom how such a thing is possible. But that remarkable metal must be at the heart of it, I am certain. Most of my work as the monastery's doctor has been trivial. Every now and then one of the guards gets injured by the local wildlife, but usually I find myself treating heat stroke and common illness. As such, I have had plenty of time to learn all the priests know about the obelisks. As told, they are stunningly ill-informed about the literal pillars of their faith. They are unaware that the obelisks are actually devices that can be activated, and needless to say they have never activated one themselves. They showed a flicker of understanding when I described the artifacts I found on the island. However, I shall have to keep digging. Unbelievable! Have these idol-worshipping ninnies replaced their common sense with blind devotion? Have years of oppressive heat completely addled their brains? I was finally allowed to see the monastery's inner sanctum, and lo and behold, there they were sitting up on an altar before a flock of protesting primitives with these glowing artifacts, just like the ones I had found in the caverns beneath the island. Yet instead of making use of them or even studying them, these half-wits are praying to them. The true value of these artifacts is completely lost on these simpletons. Sacred relics indeed. It took time, but I finally pilfered enough supplies and tools to survive on my own. Loading them onto these camel-like beasts of burden was laborious, but the real trial was absconding with the artifacts. There was always someone watching the inner sanctum, so I carefully studied the guard's shifts until I identified whose drink I had to spoil with my knockout serum. Even then I acted with great haste and guile, for my heist will surely be discovered when the priests convene for morning prayers. Alas, it will be too late. Sir Edmund Rockwell is always ahead of his foes, but not by a mere step. No, I am miles and miles beyond their reach. It's been several days since I left Prophet's Rest. I have seen no sign of pursuit. I am unsurprised. They probably assumed I would make for the Blue Obelisk, as it was nearest. By setting out for the Green Obelisk instead, I already outwitted those simple-minded zealots. As I said, miles ahead. Miles. With those fools out of the way, I can slow my pace and take some time to properly study these so-called sacred relics of theirs. I'm curious to see if the metals they are made of bear any similarity to the metal in the Starlight Sanctuary. The obelisk is reacting to the presence of the artifact with even more intensity than I had expected. Each obelisk on the island required eight artifacts to generate that sort of response, not three. In other words, I may not need to do any spelunking before summoning whatever terrifying beast the Ark has in store for me. Ah, the beast. Now that poses an entirely different conundrum. Even with my youth and my favourite pipe, I doubt I could slay a monster such as the dragon Mr. Nerva fought. Not alone, anyway. I shall need to find a partner for this venture. But who? I have turned back north in hope of making contact with some of the natives. It's a risk as I cannot be sure of how many bumbling savages are under the sway of that ludicrous obelisk worshipping cult. But it is also the only region that I definitely know is occupied. I do not have much to exchange for their aid, but I am sure that I can negotiate an alliance with at least one of this Ark's tribes. I was at the centre of the island's diplomatic disputes for years. After all, why, I'm a seasoned silver-tongued negotiator. Surely I can coax a partnership out of these primitive desert dwellers. What terrible misfortune. My keen sense of direction finally led me to a local settlement, but as it happened, I was not the first party to visit it that day. That honour belonged to the Burning Phoenix Clan, a band of raiders that were plundering the storehouses and enslaving its surviving residents as I arrived. Naturally, the hoodlums fell upon me and stripped me of my valuables within minutes of my arrival. Ruffians. I managed to keep hold of my journal, but little else. This won't do. Not at all. Then again, I was seeking out a tribe skilled in the art of violence. 
Perhaps I can turn this to my advantage. Curse those stubborn brutes. Despite a litany of polite, gentlemanly requests, they refuse to allow me to parley with their leader. Surely any leader of men is not half the imbecile these barbarians are. I'm positive that we could come to some sort of... Damn this noise. It's impossible to concentrate with all this insufferable whining. Half these prisoners won't stop moaning about one injury or another, and the other half are in constant hysterics. Very well. Perhaps if I tend to some of the wounded, it will dim this distracting cacophony. And that concludes part one of Sir Redmond Rockwell's journey across scorched earth. Of course, we continue in part two tomorrow night at the same time. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here so you don't miss any content from myself. And until tomorrow night, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.